Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the OK Grognard Show. It is Monday, November 30th, 2020, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Well, it's Monday. That means it's weekly news and announcements day. I contacted the winner, winner, giveaway recipient, and haven't heard back from him yet, so I might have to grab a new person from last week's list. But uh, since I haven't heard back from him yet, I'm going to hold off saying whether this one's complete or not. One, two, three, four. I think I have one set left of those skull dice and a Lake Geneva Games 10 cider that were placed on the Gary Gygax Memorial Stone down by the Riviera Fountain. So. The one that's uh, designated is designated, but that means that this week, anybody who's on the list for this week, and to get on the list, the giveaway list on any given week, you just have to follow the channel and then chime in on the stream chat while there's a show going on. Sorrow's Tale, you would effectively count if you're following the channel you've chimed in on the stream chat today who else is uh lurking around and behind the scenes henry armitage haven't heard from you in a little bit pop in say hello oh mandalorian man there you are lord gosamba yeah sup Rick, did you get a uh, did you get a text from me on my from my new phone this morning? I sent a text to let you know that the phone number you were getting a text from was my new phone. Cool. Well, there you go, buddy. You uh, you're the guy who uh, won the pair of skull dice from last week. And a Lake Geneva Games D6 that had been taken down to the Gygax Memorial Stone and blessed. So I'll get those out to you sometime in the not-too-distant future. We'll make arrangements. I don't know if uh, we need to increase our contact tracing nodes. We can just mail them to you or hang on until... Uh, better times but uh you know let me get them to you because you never know what's going to happen you might want to pass them on as christmas gifts to somebody some youngster or keep them for yourself you still play a little uh a little down and dirty i'm sorry D and D. so that's the goods but this show is not just about handing out dice in this show being Monday's show, weekly news and announcements, I wanted to go over again the uh, the plan going forward. So we got three more weeks of daily shows for the OK Grognard Show. Monday the 21st will be the last daily OK Grognard Show. Then we're going to take two weeks off through January 4th and then we're going to come back with a reformatted if you will OK Grognard show which will be on Monday and Thursday and Monday will be a sort of outside the game thing what's up there Bob I did have a good holiday I made a huge roast nothing pleases me more then taking the largest chunk of beef I can fit into my oven and just having tons of beefy leftovers for afterwards. Did all the all the fixins, that was good. Sure. 
No more, uh, three more weeks of daily shows. Just as the schedule shows everywhere the schedule is posted. But as you know, some of the shows are shows about stuff that happens in the game. In the setting, in the campaign, in the adventures, GMing tips. And some of the stuff, some of the shows are about stuff that happens kind of outside the game, if you will. Whether it's weekly news and announcements, or about conventions, or other things that are coming up. Or uh, GM reviews, where we talk about talk about different things like uh, movies, or television shows, books that are worth checking out if you're a game master. Um, things like that. So, or if we're just highlighting, every now and then I'll just highlight a, a company that I like. A little game company, it won't be about a specific product, but it'll be about all that they do. Uh, Crooked Staff Publishing, which is really Crooked Staff Terrain now, that does those great uh, those great uh, dungeon tile maps. Um, the Forge Studios that does all that map and illustration combination work. Uh, Dyson Logos Maps. All of those, all of those things, or some other companies that uh, that support the channel, um, like um, Rick Hershey's Fat Goblin Games. All the artwork he does. There's a lot of uh, stock art that you can use for games, but there's also adventure material. Um, Carlos and Amanda, who do uh, Castle Entertainment, C A S L Entertainment. They uh, have uh, tons of adventures that are just ready to run. First edition Osric adventures. Um, of course, uh, the Andy Padian D20 Heath down under, always enthusiastic, always giving us the news about what's happening on the other side of the globe. And, uh, of course, the granddaddy of all game companies in my opinion and he's got a sale going on right now tom tullis's fat dragon games i'll tell you he extended his uh, black friday sale through cyber monday so if you want to jump on over to uh drive through rpg and look up fat dragon and pick up some of his stuff it's, it's a great time to do it because uh Prices have never been lower. Maybe they have. I don't know. They're low, though. It's a sale. It's a good sale. He likes running sales. You should always uh, take advantage, grab a few things. There's just so much to grab. You can't get it all. But uh, that's good stuff. Yorkshire pudding. Ooh, I did not have any Yorkshire pudding. Hmm. Anyhow, so these are the kinds of things that are sort of outside the game. So the idea is... Three more weeks of daily shows, ending on the 21st. Then we're going to take two weeks off at the end of the year. We'll come back on January 4th, and uh, the OK Grognar Show will be reformatted in a twice a week, rather than daily, Monday and Thursday. I should do it the other way, right? Since Monday and Thursday, since you're looking at it. And uh, Monday will be kind of the outside the game stuff, the news and announcements as we usually do on Monday, but also uh, GMing reviews and company reviews and uh, just general stuff that uh, is away from the table. And then Thursday will be all of that other stuff, the campaign stuff, the setting stuff, the adventure stuff, the GMing tips. Um, Probably, you know, I keep going back and forth about this, but I think probably rules retrospective is the one thing. But the, but rules are part of the game, so I think that's got to be part of Thursday as well. So we'll do two shows. I'm not sure how long they'll be. Um, they'll definitely be a half hour or longer. So typical to what we're doing now. But they may extend even longer than that. And... Uh, in addition to those things, I'm going to try, now that people are 
the people that I game with in general are more acclimated to to uh, playing in a, a virtual environment. I'm going to try to uh, get uh, people that don't mind uh, having games recorded and run some games, um, record them and add them in as kind of uh, not in not to replace either of the shows on Monday or Thursday, but to um, do as, uh, I guess call them specials, because I I don't know that they'll be uh, timed at any certain time. I'll just be able to let you know when I have one scheduled. And then hopefully, if it's within a week or two after that, you'll be free or available to, uh, you know, jump in here and kind of enjoy it while it's happening. Or we can always check it out on YouTube later because schedules being what they are, you never know. What do we got going on with uh, these guys, huh? We got the dice. We got the... Is that the right way? No, that's the wrong way. I keep doing that. We got the dice. We got the shirt. We got to know something about Lake Geneva Games. Well, I talk to Jason routinely. Schedules... Yeah, I hear you, Excel. Schedules do suck. And they suck because we all have them. We all want to be able to not have them. What do we got? I gotta put all you guys on the list. I wanna do that before I before I forget. Henry's back. Gotcha. Um Sorrow's Tales, new, but we'll get you on that list. And if you're following the channel down the line, you can count as potential recipient of the weekly giveaway. Mandalorian Man, we'll get you on the list. You're good to go. The um, thing about those games is I don't know how often we'll be able to do them. I mean, ideally, it would be great to get a regular campaign running. Um, if it's going to be long term, I'm going to have to do it on a Tuesday evening, probably. That was uh, when last time I ran a campaign. The campaign I was running right up until until March. Uh, which was going to take a short break, do Gary Con, and then come back and be in some new new uh, leg of it. Uh, but, of course, it couldn't because of corona. COVID concerns kept it from campaigning. There you go. All the hard C's. It was a hard C to learn. But we did it. In any event, Tuesday is kind of my traditional day off. And if I was going to start something new, I'd want to start it in a way that it could easily continue once we get to the other side of this. I think with with all we're hearing about vaccines and stuff, we're probably looking at uh, March or April at the earliest, but at least there's light at the end of the tunnel on this whole thing. So I was tell very kind of you. I'll keep that in mind. Um, if you do get your name uh, selected as the uh, potential giveaway person, I'll contact you and you can turn it down individually. Uh, stuff's going to change all the time, what I'm giving away, and it might be interesting or it might not to you. You may see something on a given week and say, oh, you know what, I would like that. I'd like to, I'd like that. I have, I have somebody I play with all the time. Oh, I know has spoken about this thing, whatever it is on a given week. So, you know what? I'll just, uh, every, any, anybody always has the option of just saying, uh, nah, I, I, you know, I've got, uh, I'd like, uh, give away a, a couple of DVDs, uh, at earlier on earlier weeks. And, uh, but if you'd already have that D DVD, then, you know, throw it back in the pond, right? Too small. This nun's not a keeper. Let someone else get it later. 
and that's all good. I'll just draw a different name, and that's fine. But we'll do it on a week-by-week -week basis. I appreciate you saying that, though. That's very kind of you. I often, uh, I often do that with certain giveaways myself because uh, I got a lot of stuff that, uh, that that I might already have something that someone's given away, or it might be something that uh, sometimes you know what you get something from a giveaway, and it's like, oh, I don't want to see this. I know so and so is going to run it. It's an adventure or something, and. You don't want any spoilers, so you don't want to don't want to look at it. But but you never know. Like I say, we'll do it on a week by week basis, and we'll decide. So when we come up back on the fourth, it'll be kind of weird not to, not doing a show every single day. I've been doing this since March twenty sixth now, and it's kind of helped me keep track of the days of the week. Am I endangering myself by not? Uh, not posting every single day and making sure I know which day of the week it is. Maybe. But I'm also going to try to get into doing a lot more um, a lot more virtual conventions week to week. And even though I might not be able to stream them, I certainly will have them uh, have a chance on Mondays at the end of them to uh, share information from them. I'll be able to let people know when I'll be involved in one. And uh, if you want to go sign up for that virtual convention, as you can from anywhere in the world with these things, right? Uh, and jump into a game I'm running. Um, I will try to time it so that I'm uh, putting it through like on a Monday morning so that all seats are available when I make that announcement on a Monday. And then if you wanted to jump right over, I'll have a link available in the show notes so you can go check it out. Um, maybe that's not the best way. Maybe it would be best to make the announcement that, that I'm setting a game up. And then uh, after the show's up and ready to go, say go uh, put the game through at noon or at 6 that day so that... Uh, you get warning in advance that I'm going to submit a game. And then if you're available, you can jump into it. But those are, they're fun. Keep in the loop right on. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. End up tired by the time I can watch a stream of games. Yeah, you know, it's tricky. I, um... I'll watch some streams. I'll go, uh... I'll go check out a number of channels... Um, certainly I watch Carlos and Castle Entertainment games and Lord Gasumba's Greyhawk games I'll watch from time to time. The old school guys, when Jim Ward's running something with the uh, sci-fi and fantasy writer group that he uh, uh, has uh, as part of his, his uh, streaming game group, he runs a first edition uh, Kind of a kind of a Greyhawk castle, a castle Greyhawk with the serial numbers filed off, because he played in it so much back in the day, and he was so familiar with the ins and outs of that, and because he played with Gary so much, he uh, he's running it as an homage to Gary, with an eye toward giving people the experience that they would have had if they'd had a chance to game with Gary uh, virtually, because he's doing it virtually now. Now, once that whole uh, Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum opens up, I think the idea is that uh, Jim and Ernie and Tim Cask and Jeff Leeson and maybe some others, old-school TSR guys, mm -hmm. will be uh, available to run some games for people course you got to put a few shekels in their pockets because you know you can't uh can't have them take time out of their day for strangers and not uh help them pay the bills a little bit so there'll be some fees but we'll see how much they are once they once they get opened up and start doing that stuff 
I don't know. It's it's like that classic conundrum. Do you when they when they price something like a because it's a, it's like a luxury item, right? And then uh, some some people can afford it and some people can't. It doesn't mean if someone can't afford it, it doesn't mean it should be less. That it should cost less because it is what it is. The pricing is not uh, based off of whether someone can afford it or not. So it might be a little costly to have a, to be able to bring your group in or to jump in with a group and play in a game with one of these guys. But uh, I tell you, it's just so much fun. And it's, you know, it's like treating yourself to, I don't know, like a round of whirly ball. I got the whole gang out. We went and played whirly ball or laser tag where we all uh, went to a movie and got snacks together. It'll probably cost something like that, but worth every penny just to get a chance to to do that once with uh, with the, one of these guys, maybe two of these guys. Maybe you do it. Maybe you do the circuit. Maybe they'll have a deal where you can set up a game with each of the different available old school DM guys, and uh, you do like a punch card. And after you get so many punch cards, you get a get a free one i don't know maybe they'll do something like that bob says i spend all day monday to friday online for work right now and have since the start of march yeah and that will continue for the foreseeable future and man it is hard to want to be sitting here for fun when i'm off work even for gaming which i love yeah i hear you man it's uh when you have a job that has you in front of a computer all the time, it can be really tough to sit in front of a computer and have fun. And I don't care if it's a, a computer game or if it's watching people play a game or a stream of a show of anything. or You know, just getting out and going for a walk, going to the park, doing some... You know, if you're physically fit and you like to, when the weather's right, go kayaking or waterboarding. Waterboarding? That's not a... <laughs> well, you like to uh, go out. Yeah, I mean, we have a lake right here, so, you know, there's people out there all the time. I'm not a big outdoorsy person myself, but, you know, some people, they have a weekend off. They want to go camping. They want to go skiing. Let's... <laughs> Good waterboarding, right? <laughs> yeah, and of course, I'm talking about standing on a board and being dragged behind a boat, not as a form of torture, but as a form of recreation and fun. The fact that your hands are bound and you have a sack over your head shouldn't bother you. Enjoy! Enjoy this new form of fun. <laughs> oh no. Eight oh nine monster. <laughs> oh no. Well we had my father, brother, and I just drop in the chat. You know them, the FBI. And they said I'm now I'm now on a list for my uh my suggested recreational activity, so fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, haul me in, you know. Just let me uh, let me grab a few things so I can my laptop and stuff so I can run a game from from my cell. I doubt they let you have a laptop. I'm probably out. I'm probably out. <laughs> but if you like uh, water skiing or sailboarding or if you like, uh, if you like in the wintertime skiing or just getting out and hiking, God, there's so many, so many wonderful trails. Hey, I don't know how many people have heard that with everything that's going on, that wildlife is sort of uh, uh, 
re-entering areas where they were more scarce before. Um, I'm not saying that hunting is down or anything like that. I, our buddy Don, who uh, joins us all the time, was just posting about a hunting trip he made with uh, his brother and some other members of his family. And I guess they did a had a really good weekend. But um, but I understand people are starting to spot like uh, coyotes and mountain lions and bears in areas where they weren't traditionally seen for some time um as if to say that with less human activity the pushback is real so watch yourself hey if i'm saying if you're going hiking um you know i know even even when ernie was taking his dog out not long ago several years probably now since uh you could go out onto the old uh park on 50 there the old uh, closed uh, golf golf course uh, when you used to be able to go in there and run your dogs and do stuff like that uh, every now and then we need to be out there he'd see some coyotes on the fringes of the woods there so even nowadays even then before we were less apparent in the world dank plays games hey buddy Thanks for popping in. Let's get you on the list here. Am I missing anyone else here? I think I've I think I've got everybody. There we go. Good to see you. We've been uh we've been talking about uh the fine line between outdoor recreation and torture for those of us who are in gamer shape. This double XL shirt is uh, what is traditionally known as a gamer small. For those of you who, I'm sure, I'm sure most people are actually in better shape. It's a just a running gag. Don't mind us. Do do what kind of hobby you're trying to post there? I don't think uh, the chat allows for links to places. You like to be outside? Well, what do you do outside? I wish there was a 5e campaign setting adventure book for Greyhawk. Right? I know that a number of people have been trying to push for that. Um, you know that this virtual Greyhawk Con, which uh, was in the first weekend of October, was um, a pretty successful thing. I had a lot of fun running it. Insteading with the Giants adventure there, or the beginning of that campaign, because I ran it over two other other conventions as well as a kind of a sandbox campaign. Um, for Gary Con, uh, Luke has talked to Jay Scott, who heads up. Uh, he's Lord Gusumba, and he headed up the uh, virtual Greyhawk Con, and they're going to do a con within a con. So there's going to be a virtual Greyhawk presence within GaryCon this March. So if you like Greyhawk, and there's a lot of 5e Greyhawk content that is created by individuals, but they can only, they can't sell it, um, but they can run it provided it's the author running it because you can run you can certainly run a game in a gray in a Greyhawk setting at a convention, virtual or physical. So if it's your own material, but at, even as they do that and run their own material, they do it in a coordinated effort within the different territories, almost like a living Greyhawk with fifth edition rules. So if you want some fifth edition Greyhawk. Make sure you sign up for GaryCon late in March and uh, join in with the uh, virtual Greyhawk material that'll be on there. That'll be a lot of fun. Bob says, I can't 
Wait for the day I can immerse myself in gaming a lot more. Yeah, right on, man. That's always the thing, too. When you're younger and you have more time, you don't have the money to be able to do it. And then once you're older and you've sorted your life out more, suddenly you don't have the time. You're so busy with family and friends and children and house payments and jobs that always want a few extra hours out of you for nothing. The bastards. The man. But we do what we do to get through. And we eke out some fun when we can. So keep keep looking for those opportunities. Certainly look for... Uh, Sorrow's Tale said, I had a lot of fun. Played there. Played three games there. Thanks, Lord G. Right on. Big thanks to Lord Gasumba for all he does for Greyhawk and for... Well, he runs a first slash second edition game. and So old school gaming is the way he does it. But those 5th uh, edition ones, man, they had a whole panel of them. There were a ton of them. It was like uh, it was like Adventurer's League in Greyhawk, in a way. Um, or, a living, or, or a living Greyhawk updated from 3rd to 5th edition. You know, it was set up like a organized play convention series of games. And you could jump into... A whole bunch of them over the course of the weekend. You probably keep your whole schedule packed with 5th edition Greyhawk if you wanted to. Hard to believe how huge 5th edition is. It blows my mind. Yeah, you know, you're right, Bob. It's, uh, it's really, it's really come into its own with 5th edition in that it is less of a niche hobby. Um, I doubt that there are many people in places where the game's available that aren't already familiar with the game, at least in passing. Um, even if they haven't actually played themselves or uh, aren't aficionados. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now. 5e Greyhawk game from Sorrow's Tale. Nice. Nice. You should run some for... Uh, for Gary Con. I think there's a midwinter con coming up too in January. I'm looking into that um, as a place to run some some RPGs, some games, and maybe some board games too. I like to, uh, Tom and I do some uh, virtual tabletop board gaming usually once or twice a week on Tuesdays, Fridays around lunchtime. That's a lot of fun. It's uh, It's different than regular board gaming. But not so different. It's just, it's just as, uh, just as fun to get a chance to play with friends through Discord, using that as a voice chat and using whichever virtual tabletop, Yucata D E, dot D E, a German site that does virtual tabletop board gaming, board game arena, tabletopia, whatever, whatever you use. They're a lot of fun. Anyway, I better wrap it up here, but thank you very much, everybody, for popping by today and uh, joining me on this Monday after the holiday weekend. I hope everybody had a good time. I hope everybody stayed safe and secure and will continue to enjoy gaming. Keep looking towards spring, folks. I think those vaccines are giving us some inkling of when we're going to get to the other side of this. We can start doing some gaming in person again. And obviously, doubly true for me, who's uh, locked, cocked, and ready to rock to run the game store again. So let's get that reopened as soon as we can safely and uh, start getting those games. I'm a game presario. <laughs> I like organizing games, whether I get to play in them or not. I like making sure people are having fun and playing games and getting together and all of that. And man, that's what I miss the most from uh, the store being closed. It's not, uh, I like selling stuff. I like uh, putting games in the hands of people. I like being able to play games at the store myself, but 
I really, really enjoy organizing all those small events and, you know, scheduling them, getting tables ready for people to play, maybe uh, finding little extras for them to use at the table while they're playing. I miss that. So we'll get back to that soon. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Once again, I will say... Come on back and join us these next three weeks while we're still doing daily shows. When you get the chance. Tuesdays, cartography and world building. All of these at 10 a.m. Wednesday, campaign discussion. GMing tips on Thursday. Building adventures on Friday. GM reviews on Saturday. And we do a rules retrospective on Sunday. Back around the horn to weekly news and announcements next Monday. If you're catching up with this on YouTube, thank you very much. Please do subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up on any videos that you watch and enjoy. Also, feel free to make comments. You got some constructive criticism or maybe just want to give us an attaboy or a pat on the back or a warm fuzzy. It's all appreciated. Makes us feel good. Helps make the show better. Hey, maybe you have some ideas for how we're going to do things after January or when we get into January with just the two shows a week. Leave some comments about that, too. Thank you once again. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Bye-bye. <laughs>